Our objective in this lesson is to determine if an equation is a function or not. Let's have a quick review of our previous lessons. Write f if a function and nf if not a function. This is a set of ordered pairs and this is nf, not a function. Why? Is it because the zero of y values have been repeated? No, it is because the 8 of x values have been repeated. Remember that for a set of ordered pairs to be a function, the x values should not be repeated. Here we have table of values and let us take a look at the x values, negative 4, 0, 3, 5, and 9. No values have been repeated, therefore this is a function. This one is a graph, so let us make use of the vertical line test. Let us move the vertical line on any part of the graph. And since it intersects the graph at only one point, therefore this is a function. For the last one, we have a map and let us examine this. All values of x are mapped to a number in the second group. And each x value here is mapped to only one value in the second group. So therefore, this is a function. Now, I am going to teach you to determine if an equation is a function or not. You have to consider two things. One, an equation should contain an equal sign. We cannot call it an equation if it does not have an equal sign. And second, remember the definition of a function. It is a relation that gives a single output number for every valid input number. So this means in any given equation, we need to solve the equation for y and analyze if there are any values of x that can be substituted to the equation that will give different values of y. If there is only a single output of y for every value of x, then the equation is a function. Let's have an example. You will notice here that we have an equal sign, and since this is a relation, we should have two variables, the independent and the dependent variables, the x and y. Now let us examine if this is a function or not. Think of a value that you can substitute for x and analyze if it will give you a single output for y. Let us try 0. 5 times 0 is 0 and 0 plus 3 is 3. So if your x is 0, your y is 3. Let us put that in a table. Let's try another value. Let us say positive 1. 5 times 1 is 5 and 5 plus 3 is 8. So if your x is 1, your y is 8. Let's have another one. Let us say negative 1. 5 times negative 1 is negative 5, and negative 5 plus 3 is negative 2. Notice that for every unique value of x, you have a single output for y. Therefore, this equation is a function. Let's have another one. x squared is equal to y plus 1. Let us isolate y. So let us move 1 on this side. This will become y is equal to x squared minus 1. So our y is already defined and we do not have any more y's here on the right side. We have an equal sign and we have two variables. Now let us try to substitute values. Again, let us start with 0. 0 is squared is 0 and 0 minus 1 is negative 1. So if your x is 0, your y is negative 1. Let us try positive 1. 1 is squared is 1 and 1 minus 1 is 0. Let's have negative 1. Negative 1 is squared is 1 and 1 minus 1 is also 0. Remember what you have learned in table of values. We simply take a look at the x values and there should be no values that has been repeated. And there is none. Therefore, this equation is a function. Let's have another one. Let us isolate y and make it positive. So this will become 2y is equal to x squared minus 7. To solve for y, we're going to divide both sides by 2. 2 and 2 here will cancel out, leaving us y. And on this side, we have x squared minus 7 all over 2. 
we have an equal sign and we have x and y our y is already defined we do not have any more y's on the right side and when you substitute any number for x if you have trouble thinking what numbers to substitute use our technique here substitute zero positive number and negative number and you will see that for every unique value of x you will get a unique value of y therefore this equation is a function try this 2x minus 5y is equal to 10 let us isolate y and make it positive so this will become 5y is equal to 2x minus 10 to solve for y let us divide both sides by 5 5 and 5 here will cancel out leaving us y then we have here 2 over 5 of x and then 10 divided by 5 is 2 we have an equal sign, we have x and y, and our y is already defined. We do not have any more y's on the right side. And if you substitute any value for x, you will get a unique value of y. Therefore, this equation is a function. Let us have another one. We have x squared plus y squared is equal to 100. We have here an equal sign, and we have x and y. For some of you, you will notice that this equation is an equation for a circle. And using a vertical line test, we know that a circle is not a function. But what if you do not know the graph of the equation? So let us isolate y here. Let us move x squared on this side. We have y squared is equal to 100 minus x squared. To solve for y, we have to take the square roots of both sides. So this radical symbol and this exponent will simply cancel out. And the square root of the right side will give us two answers, positive and negative. Let's make this simpler. For instance, you have y squared is equal to 100. To solve for the value of y, you're going to take the square roots of both sides. So this radical symbol and the exponent will simply cancel out. Now, the square root of 100 will give you two answers. Those are positive and negative 10. Positive 10 squared is 100. Negative 10 squared is also 100. So when you take the square root of 100, it gives you two answers, positive and negative. That makes our y not unique. That is why this is not a function. Let's have another one. This time we have y cubed is equal to x plus 3. To solve for y, we have to take the cube root of both sides. So this will cancel out. And so we have y is equal to cube root of x plus 3. Let's make this simpler like this one. Let us say you have y cubed is equal to 27. To solve for y, you take the cube root of both sides, so this will cancel out, and the cube root of 27 is positive 3. If you have y cubed is equal to negative 27, taking the cube root of both sides, so this will become y, and the cube root of negative 27 is negative 3. The thing here is, every number gives a unique cube root. If your number is positive, it will give you a positive cube root. If your number is negative, it will give you a negative cube root. So your y here is defined. The cube root of x plus 3 will give you a unique value of y. Therefore, this equation is a function. Let us do extra challenge. For each of the equation here, we have an equal sign and we have x and y. Now, let us analyze each one of them. For this one, to solve for y, you have to take the square roots of both sides. So, the radical symbol and the exponent will simply cancel out. And since you take the square root of the right side, it will give you two answers, positive and negative. And since you have two answers, that means your y is not unique. Therefore, this equation is not a function. For this one, we have y is equal to the square root of 4 minus x. The difference of this equation from here is that in here, you take the square root of both sides. While on this one, your y is already defined. This means you are only asked to get the positive root 
of 4 minus x. If you have here a negative symbol, then it means you are asked to give the negative root of 4 minus x. So whichever is the case, positive or negative root, your y is unique. You only have one value. Therefore, this equation is a function. Now, for this one, the only difference of this equation to this one is the placement of the variables. Here I have y, here I have x. Inside the radical symbol here is x, here I have y. To solve for y, we are going to square both sides. The radical symbol here and the exponent will cancel out, so we have x squared is equal to 4 minus y. Let us isolate y and make it positive. So we have y is equal to 4 minus x squared. Now our y is defined. We do not have any more y's on the right side of the equation. And when you substitute any value for x here, you will get a single output for y. Therefore, this equation is a function. I still have some space here. Let's have some more. I have here an equal sign and also the x and y. To solve for y, let us square both sides. So this radical symbol and this exponent will cancel out. So we have x squared is equal to 2 minus y squared. Let us isolate y and make it positive. This will become y squared is equal to 2 minus x squared. And to solve for y, we're going to extract the square roots of both sides. The radical symbol and the exponent will cancel out. And this will give us two answers, positive and negative. Since we have two answers, it means our y is not unique. Therefore, the equation is not a function. Let's have another one. y is equal to the absolute value of x minus 3. The absolute value function makes any value substituted here positive. Let us try 1. The absolute value of 1 is 1 and 1 minus 3 is negative 2. If we have negative 1, the absolute value of negative 1 is still 1 and 1 minus 3 is negative 2. Again, for the table of values, we are only concerned for the x values. No x value must be repeated. And here, there is none. Therefore, this equation is a function. Now, let's have this one. This time, y is inside the absolute value symbol. Let us recall the definition of absolute value. It is the distance of the number from 0. So, let us say you have the absolute value of y is equal to 2. Y here could be 2, since the absolute value of 2 is 2. Y could also be negative 2, since the absolute value of negative 2 is also 2. So this means your Y has two different values. So in this equation, Y could be X minus 3 and Y could be the opposite of this. This means when Y is inside the absolute value symbol, it gives us two different answers. Therefore, this equation is not a function. Now, let us unlock the secret. I have listed here all the equations that we discuss and if it is a function or not a function. Can you now tell me if an equation is a function or not a function by simply looking at it? I'll give you a few seconds to think about it or you may pause this video if you want more time. Let me now reveal the secret. An equation is not a function when y is raised to an even power or y is inside an absolute value function. Let's take a look back. Here, the exponent of y is 1. Here, it is also 1. In here, it is also 1. And in here, it is also 1. And 1 is an odd number. That's why these four equations are function. In here, the exponent of y is 2, and 2 is an even number. That is why this is not a function. In here, the exponent of y is 3, and 3 is an odd number, so this is a function. Here, the exponent of y is 2, and 2 is an even number, so this is not a function. The exponent of y here is 1, 
in here it is also 1 and 1 is an odd number so these two are functions here the exponent of y is 2 2 is an even number so this is not a function the exponent of y here is 1 and 1 is an odd number so this is a function the exponent of y here is 1 however y is inside an absolute value function that's why this is not a function as easy as that now it is time to check your understanding pause this video for more time Let me reveal the answers and I would love to know your scores. So kindly write them in the comment box below. Let me just explain number six, why it is not a function. Because this is not an equal sign. This is an inequality symbol. Gets? Our next lesson is piecewise functions.